This is Wild Chronicles. I'm Boyd Matson. At the Frisco Creek Wildlife Rehabilitation Center in Colorado, some special patients arrive for a final checkup. Five lynx are sedated so they can be safely handled. They may look like giant house cats, but lynx are wild cats, and these adults are in their prime. This is the largest male we have. This is Yukon male, a one, and he's actually only put on a kilogram, which is good, since he's been here because he came in very good shape. The lynx were trapped months ago in the Yukon in British Columbia. Now, researcher Tanya Schink is preparing them for release back into the wild, into a region far south from the land of their birth. <laughs> their new home will be here, near the historic mining town of Creed, Colorado, where it's hoped they will encounter lots of food and few humans. There were some preliminary studies done on snowshoe hare abundance, and they were relatively high down here. We also looked at where the largest roadless areas were and where the lowest human density was. It's a controversial program. Some worry about releasing a carnivorous predator into even sparsely populated areas. Even in Colorado's less inhabited areas, there still could be plenty of hikers and ranchers. Others doubted the program could work. Lynx had never been successfully reintroduced into the wilds of North America. At first, the Colorado program faltered when many of the transplanted lynx died. We felt that the best thing we could do for a wild animal was to get it back out to the wild. So they were released fairly quickly and they were released in winter um, here in Colorado. And those are the animals that had low survival. But since then, Officials have learned some important lessons. The lynx are now trapped in Canada and Alaska in the winter and held in a facility in Colorado for a few months until spring. That gives them time to get acclimated to the altitude and climate and to fatten up before they're released into their new home. We moved it to a spring release and the reason we did that was, number one, it was past their breeding season, so they wouldn't have the complication of breeding the first year they were out. And second of all, the most prey was available to them in, in an unknown terrain. From the cockpit of a Cessna 185, Bob Dickman collects data on aerial missions high above the Rockies. Studies show the survival rate for the reintroduced lynx has now improved, and the females are having multiple litters of kittens. At the same time, officials have been working with farmers and ranchers to address their concerns about the program. Back on the ground, the latest batch of wild Canadian lynx are transferred from their cages to specially designed squeeze boxes so they can be anesthetized. What the squeeze cage does is one of the walls, actually, as we crank it, will move in and, and squeeze the animal down. And, and once they're anesthetized, we have the opportunity to really look at the animals and, you know, just really check everything out about them. In the final step, the cats are fitted with radio and satellite collars. These will allow researchers to track their movements. Dots are the satellite locations. Once the animals are revived, everything is set for their release back into the wild. A few days later, two of the lynx are transported to the release site. The cats are healthy and acclimated the weather is ideal. All conditions are optimum for the lynx to enter their new home state. First steps are tentative. But these cats are following in the paw prints of dozens of lynx that have been successfully released. 
Right now, things look very promising and very successful. I mean, maybe in another five or 10 or 15 years, we're gonna be able to say we successfully brought back and have established a viable population of lynx in Colorado. The immigrants from up north have settled in, and now an animal native to Colorado is on the comeback trail.